You know that moment in movies where someone's on an operating table, a mask comes down, everything gets blurry, and then next thing you know they're crying and blabbing something really embarrassing about their childhood to the post-op recovery nurses? Well, that's... Okay, that's kind of true. But what's actually going on in your brain and body when you go under is way stranger and a lot more carefully choreographed than Hollywood ever shows you. Because anesthesia, well, it's not quite sleep and it's not quite death. It's more like time travel, but you can only jump forward. I'm Dr. Daniel Modell, an anesthesiologist, and today I'm pulling back the surgical drape on what really happens when you go under anesthesia and why it's one of the weirdest science tricks humans pull off on a daily basis. Anesthesia is basically a dimmer switch for certain parts of your brain and nervous system. But there's more than one flavor of anesthesia. There's local anesthesia, which numbs a small area, like when you go to the dentist, that's local. There's regional anesthesia, which numbs a bigger zone, like an arm or a leg, or an epidural during childbirth, where your whole lower body basically just goes offline. And then there's general anesthesia. This is the big one. Total unconsciousness, no movement, no pain, and no memory. Today we're mostly going to be talking about general anesthesia, the one people are usually most nervous about, because it kind of involves shutting down your brain's perception of reality, but in a way that's precise and more importantly reversible. If you've had it, then you know the routine. You're wheeled into a bright operating room full of beeping machines. There are way more people in there than you expected. And then someone in scrubs and a surgical mask smiles and says, okay, just take some nice deep breaths and soon you'll drift off to sleep. In the same tone you use to tell a dog you're going to the park when you're really going to the vet. Now, you might get meds through an IV that work within seconds, or you might breathe in anesthetic gases through a mask, which can take a couple of minutes to work. For most people, the last thing they remember is maybe counting backwards from 10. But inside your body, a whole cascade of events is unfolding. Step one is sedation, where your awareness of the world starts to fade. Step two is loss of memory. The hippocampus, the part of your brain in charge of storing new events, is quietly put down for a nice long nap. Step three is loss of consciousness. Your brain's communication networks basically go offline for any real meaningful input. And then step four is immobility and pain control. Your spinal cord and pain pathways are suppressed, so you don't feel what the surgeons are doing and you don't jump off the table or try to bite one of the nurses. All this happens in about a minute. And the weirdest part is, you don't feel yourself losing consciousness because there's no consciousness there to feel anything. One second you're in the room, and next you're waking up, wondering if anything's even happened yet. General anesthesia doesn't just turn off your brain like a light bulb. It's more like a series of network outages. Your brain is made up of billions of neurons talking to each other in these intricate patterns. Anesthesia drugs target these communication patterns in several ways. For example, drugs like propofol crank up GABA activity. GABA is a neurotransmitter that basically tells neurons to relax, which quiets brain activity. Drugs like ketamine block NMDA receptors, which inhibit excitatory signals, preventing neurons from overfiring. And opioids like morphine and fentanyl intercept pain messages before they have a chance to even reach the brain. The result is that your thalamus, which normally acts like a traffic cop for sensory information, stops letting most signals through, and the cortex, the part that gives you conscious awareness, loses its rhythm, so you lose consciousness. And here's something really strange. Brain scans of people under anesthesia look different from those of people who are just sleeping. During sleep, your brain cycles through different phases of brainwave activity in a predictable way. But under anesthesia, those cycles are disrupted or completely absent. You're not just in a deep sleep, you're in a drug-induced blackout. A lot of people think anesthesia just knocks you out so that you don't feel any pain. But memory suppression is just as important. If you were somehow aware but paralyzed during surgery, yes, that's a very rare complication known as intraoperative awareness, you'll be terrifying. So anesthetic drugs also make sure that your brain can't record what's happening. So even if your brain does receive a few stray signals, there's no footage to play back later.
The anesthesiologist or nurse anesthetist doesn't just send you off to dreamland and then goes to grab a coffee, despite all the hilarious jokes to the contrary. They're more like your life support pilot. During the entire surgery, they're continuously monitoring your oxygen and CO2 levels, heart rate, blood pressure, and EKG, adjusting drug levels second by second, and watching for subtle changes in your body's responses and anticipating problems before they actually happen. It's more like being a modern airline pilot. You don't just take off and walk away from the cockpit. You're overseeing multiple complex systems, making thousands of small decisions about what you see developing, and then making constant micro adjustments to prevent disaster until you're safely back on the ground. Here's another surprise. Waking up from anesthesia is not like waking up from a nap. Once the drugs start wearing off, your brain's networks begin reconnecting and coming back online, but not all at once. You'll almost certainly feel groggy or confused. Your sense of time is usually scrambled as it feels like you were just wheeled into the OR a few minutes ago. Some people have wild dreams or hallucinations. And occasionally you might say some unfiltered things. Nurses could write whole books about what people blurt out after surgery. That's why it pays to be nice to them in pre-op. So, is anesthesia dangerous? Well, in healthy people, modern anesthesia is extremely safe. The risk of a fatal complication is way lower than your risk of dying in a car crash on the way to the hospital. But there are still considerations. People with certain heart, lung, or neurological issues do have higher risks for complications. Allergic reactions to medications or breathing problems can also happen. And rarely, people experience post-operative cognitive issues, especially in older adults. And the myths? You can get stuck and never wake up. Not really, unless there's another unrelated medical catastrophe. Anesthesia is just deep sleep. No, it's a totally different brain state, like we talked about earlier. They steal your soul. Well, it definitely inhibits your conscious self temporarily, but what that means philosophically, I'll let you decide. Think about this. In just over 150 years, we've gone from surgeons operating on screaming, restrained, awake patients to being able to stop pain, prevent the recording of traumatic memories, and control consciousness itself, all while keeping you alive and stable. It's one of the few times in life where we literally hand over our existence to another person, trusting they'll return us safely. And the fact that they almost always do, I think that's pretty amazing. So the next time you or someone you know needs surgery, Remember, going under isn't just falling asleep. It's a precisely executed but reversible hijacking of your body and brain. And if you wake up saying something embarrassing, well, don't worry, it's actually a HIPAA violation to upload patient videos to TikTok. Thank God. Anyway, hit like if you learned something today, subscribe for more science and medicine breakdowns, and drop a comment telling me the weirdest or funniest thing you've ever heard someone say after waking up from anesthesia. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.